actually referenced this text. Um, I don't know if it, it could have been last week and in a message or a, a, some study of some sorts, uh, maybe two weeks ago. And um, but but today, what we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, this 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 new uh, religion movement, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and and this this particular group, they they call themselves Israel United in Christ. Okay. Uh, you may know them as uh, this black Hebrew, black Hebrews, okay? And, um, uh, well, it, it has different, different names, different titles, okay? <laughs> uh, but we do know that if you, if you look it up, they go under Israel United in Christ, okay? That's, that's what they're, they now have a caption to which they call themselves, and and so we we want to we want to see some things about what they believe. Now, in Colossians chapter two, uh, the apostle Paul says these words to us in verse starting there with verse number six. He says, "As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him." Okay, very important. Walk in Christ Jesus, rooted. And built up in him. That speaks of being grounded. It's just like if you plant seed in the ground and that seed grows up and it becomes a, a tree, it becomes a, uh, you know, whatever, uh, it's rooted, it, it's, it's taken root. So it is with being grounded in the, in the word of God. And established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. And then he, he gives that admonition there in verse number eight. He says, beware lest does any man spoil you or uh, we could say deceive you through philosophies and vain deceit. After the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Okay. Now that word spoil, it also means to be taken captive. Okay. Beware lest someone take you as a captive or as a hostage. They may not, when we think in terms of captives and hostages, we often think of people that, that have handcuffs on them or they have ankle cuffs on them, right? And, and they're put in a prison cell. Okay, that's what we think of when we think of captive of, or hostage. Some people are taken captive uh, mentally, okay? And, and, and they, unfortunately, some, they don't even know it. They don't even realize it. Paul gives us this warning. He says, beware uh, of these men. Beware of these people who try to make you a prisoner uh, of, of their philosophy, of their teaching. You need to be careful. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and, and then we'll, we'll get into our message, and, and I'll kind of give you some of, somewhat of the overview, because I'm going to have you interact in our study today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much, God, for this day. It's a special, special day. God, perhaps this is the greatest day of the year. And Lord, how important it is for us who are considered to be believers in, in Jesus Christ to recognize the need of the resurrection of Jesus. And, and Lord, the importance of it. And, and God, how if it wasn't for your resurrection, Lord, we would really, honestly, Lord, we, we would have no, no, uh, no hope, God, of, of this, this thing called eternal life. It's, it's interesting, Lord, we, can, we talk about our sins forgiven, and, and Lord, what person wouldn't want that? But Lord, more than that, God, is to have that assurance of knowing that uh, heaven is our home and victory is on our side. Now, Lord, help me, God, please, for the next couple of minutes to uh, bring uh, to, to these young men and to these men uh, information concerning this, this group uh, that I'm sure will be getting more notoriety, uh, particularly in, in the days that we live in, uh, concerning what they believe. Help us to be students of the Bible. God, help us to boldly stand on the truth. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Now... Um, uh, brother Nick, did you see this? Okay, so so what I'm going I'm going to skip you. Okay, I'm going to hand out to you 
information that Brother Jerry and I received when we were in Indianapolis. Uh, and, and this is, this is uh, in my mind, what is this? This is simply put as propaganda, okay? Uh, but but this, this is, these are a group of people uh, that have been given a microphone. They, they have, uh, the, the city of Indianapolis allowed them to speak wherever they want to speak at. In fact, they were in the most active location at that particular time, I believe, when Brother Jerry and I were in the city of Indianap in Indianapolis. They were downtown, smack dab in the middle of the downtown area, and they were they were spewing out what they believe. Now, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pass this now. Once once you look at this, don't spend all day looking at this information because I want others to also glance at that. Now, also, evidently someone has been monitoring uh, me, uh, whether they have been listening in on our sermons. Uh, on YouTube or whether they, they heard me speak uh, on television last week uh, or they, I don't know where they have heard me, but I got a letter this past week from, from this organization, from these, these people. <clears throat> I'm not going to read all of, of the information here, but, but I'm, I'm going to read a part of this. What these groups try to do, they try to play on your sympathy. They try to play on your emotion, okay? And, and unfortunately, naive people who do not know Christ start to believe, they start to buy into some, into some of this. But this is the way the letter starts. It says, uh, it says Dear Pastor McMiller of Heritage Baptist Church, <clears throat> it, says you, it says Israel United in Christ is a faith-based organization of collective members who focus on the importance of building and restoring our people as a nation back to their true identity and biblical heritage. Our message is spread throughout North, Central, and South America as well as abroad with an accomplished or with, with that accomplished we can work collectively or together on restoring our communities from the issues of substance abuse, crime, poverty, police brutality, single, single parent households, and lack of education and resource for our women, children, elderly, and our men. Now, all of that sounds great. All of that sounds to the average person, oh, this is a good organization. This is a good group. They only want to help improve our society. Okay. Um, now, in the letter here, it says, uh, you are receiving this letter due to the fact that we value and respect your efforts in these areas to give our people, that is, people who are black, okay, and, and now they're saying uh, Hispanic, uh, Puerto Rican uh, uh, outlets and resources to positively impact their community. The impact, the outreach, and the local program your group sponsors can be seen in the neighborhood. Now, I'm, honestly, they don't know anything about us. Okay, so I don't know how they can say what you guys are doing. I mean, it's it's helping your community. Um, I, don't, I don't know where they get that from. But again, what are they doing? They're trying to play on our emotions, all right? And so I'm not going to read the rest of this, but I'll end here. It says, our elder Bishop uh, Nathan Yale uh, has well over 25 years of teaching experience and scholarly research in this particular subject matter. He has made great appearances on countless radio and television shows worldwide, including the United Kingdom, Guyana, Liberia, Mexico, Haiti, Jamaica, Trinidad, to name a few. In, these, in, in recent years, the bishop has lectured and debated at colleges 
and universities within the United States would to God they would let someone like me on their college campus debate uh, their whoever they want to bring, as well as the higher education, educational facilities in Guyana. Israel United in Christ has over 66 schools in the United States alone with a growing number of official schools internationally. Please let us know, or please, please let us know an appropriate date we can possibly meet to address concerns and questions you may have, okay? And then they say, respectively, Israel united in Christ. All right. So let me just talk a little bit about, um, I want to talk about their conception. I want to talk about their creed. That is what they believe in. I want to talk about their converts. And then I want to talk about uh, how we can counter them. Okay. Because when you see these people in the, in the, in the uh, arena, in, the, in, in society, what they are talking about is, is anything but peace. Uh, they are very, very aggressive in, in what they believe. Some of you may remember when we were on 22nd, we had a couple of these guys on a Sunday morning. There were about six or seven of them across the street from our church. And, and, and now, by the way, they didn't have, they were not called uh, Israel United. I don't, maybe they were, maybe they were, I don't know. Israel United for Christ. But now they have, they have a name. They have a logo. You know, instead of being called Black Israelites, now they're called Israel United for Christ. Okay. And why is that? It's because in America, America has a lot of people that don't know what this is all about. <clears throat> This group has been labeled as an anti-Semitic and anti-white organization due to their beliefs and the language that they use in their discourse. They are labeled by such highly liberal and even anti-Christ organization known such as the Southern Poverty of Law Center. Now, how many of you ever heard of the Southern Poverty of Law Center? That is an ultra-liberal organization. I mean, th this organization, <clears throat> the day is going to come where they're going to have fundamentalists, they're going to have us on their hit list as being uh, hostile, uh, critical, bad people. Now, if this liberal institution will say that Israel United for Christ is a bad outfit, you better believe they're a bad outfit. I mean, because that Southern law, Southern, Southern poverty law uh, office, like I said, they, this is a group, they're not Christians. And yet they're saying that this United, Israel United for Christ is bad news. Okay. So let me tell you about their conception, first of all. And, and if you have anything you want to add, please feel free to do that. Their conception, when did this group start? This group started in 2003, 2003. Our church has been going longer than this group has been started, okay? And yet, when in this letter here it says that they have 66 schools. Now, I don't know if they have 66 schools or not, okay? Maybe they're talking about nationwide, okay? But, but let's just say, for sake of argument, that they do have 66 schools. I find it fascinating that they have been able to grow that fast in, in less than 20 years, okay? So what does that tell me? That tells me that they have been able to tap into something that has been used to bring people on board to, to form their religion. Yes, Brother Gratian. Okay. Right, right.
Right. Right. Right. Right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Right. I'm pretty sure it's in my office. Pretty sure. Right. 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 Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, just 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 kind of backtracking to what you said, uh, you, you indicated that these these, you know, they, they say that, you know, Christianity doesn't work, you know, um, and yeah, if, if, if you, you know, if you want something out of life and you're not willing to work for it and, you know, and yet you say, well, you know, I, I prayed a prayer. I accepted Jesus in my heart and look at where I ended up at. You know, look, I've ended up in jail. I've ended up breaking the law. I've ended up with this, this bad spirit, this rebellious spirit. And I attribute that to Jesus Christ, to Christianity. And then but we know, you know what, it's, it's not that it doesn't work, it's just that you didn't mean business. See, that's, that's, that's what it's all about. That's, you know, that's the key right there. And, and so, yeah, it's, uh, you know, when I hear people say, well, well, you know, Christianity doesn't work. I say, what, well, it worked for me? You know, it, it worked for others. It, it worked for, you know, uh, uh, Adrian Rogers. It, it worked for uh, Billy Sunday. It, it worked for... You know, I mean, all these people it worked for. So don't don't try to convince me that it doesn't work. I know it works. So, yes, Brother Montejo. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sure. Sure. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's you know, unfortunately, um, they're 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 basing the 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 very foundation or the core of their beliefs is based on the color of your skin. Okay. 
And, and it's, it's, you know, like I said on the television program, I said it's not the color of your sin. It's, it's, it's the level of your sin. You know, it's a sin issue. It's not a color issue. And, and, and yet, you know, this, this, this particular group of people, um, you know, they're, they're, they're basing their, their findings on, on skin color. So this is their conception, right? And, and they, they came into existence. In, in 2003, 2003. Now their creed. Uh, when I say their creed, what is it that they believe in? Okay. And, and, and so I'm just going to go through some things here and, and I'm going to read some of this information that, that I gathered that, that some individuals have stated concerning what these people believe. So, first of all, they believe uh, that, that Jesus is black. Okay. They believe that Jesus was black uh, and that that people of color are the true lost tribes of Israel. Now, when I say people of color, I mean black people. OK, uh, but but you know what they've done now. Now they've included, uh, you know, uh, Indians of Indian descent, uh, you know, Cubans, uh, you know, Puerto Ricans. Uh, yeah, pretty much anybody that's not white. OK. So, so they've included this in, in their ideology, okay? They believe that since John uh, depict Jesus as having, and we're talking about John the beloved apostle, uh, let's, let's go to Revelation chapter number one. Revelation chapter number one. Now, obviously, guys, we're, we're not, we're not going to be able to go through all of this study today. Um, and, and that's, that's okay. Okay. In, in Revelation chapter number one, uh, of course, who is the author of, of this particular book, the book of Revelation? The book of Revelation, the author is John the Beloved. And who was John the Beloved? John the Beloved was one of the 12 disciples that broke bread with Jesus. In fact, History tells us that John the Beloved was the one that leaned on the side. If you ever see a picture uh, of what is considered to be uh, the Lord's final supper, and, and you'll find, you'll look at it, there's usually one guy that's leaning on, on the shoulder or on the breast of Jesus. Historically speaking, that is considered to be John the Beloved. And so John is the author of the book of Revelation. And in, in Revelation chapter number one, and, and by the way, if, if you just came in, uh, what we're looking at, there's, there's a group out there, they, they call themselves Israel United for Christ. Uh, this, is a, this is a quote unquote new religion uh, that is, they, their practices, their teachings, much of it is contrary to the Bible. Uh, they've been able to take bits and pieces out of the Bible and they form this religion. The religion is called Israel United for Christ. And, and so what are we looking at now? We are looking at John. And the reason why we're looking at John is because this religion, this, this Israel United for Christ, believes that the only ones that, that are going to go to heaven or black people, or anyone that's not white, anyone that's not Caucasian. Now, so what are we looking at right now? We're looking at their creed. We're looking at some of the things that they believe, okay? And, and the Bible, and, and if you were not here, God tells us that, that as, as people of the Bible, we need to be able to defend what we believe in. According to the Bible, what does the Bible say about it? So John in chapter one, John has this vision, right? And John is able to see the future. He's able to see events that are going to happen in the future. And, and but, but because of, of what he saw, he could only interpret what he saw based on his makeup, based on where he was at. You know, for example, tanks and rockets and, uh, you know, uh, electric cars did not exist in those days. So <clears throat> John wouldn't know what an electric car is. He wouldn't know what a, you know, what, what a tank is. He wouldn't know what a, what a uh, 
uh, rocket ship is. He can only give to us what he saw in his mind in that day. Does that make sense? You know, uh, 100 years from now, if the rapture doesn't happen, if the world is still here, there's going to be some inventions that we don't know anything about, right? And we'll only be able to talk about what we know in our lifetime. So John sees this vision, and in, in Revelation chapter 1, look at verse number 14. Well, let's, let's bag up. Verse, uh, well, no, verse 14, verse number 14. He's interpreting what, what he believed to be Jesus Christ, okay? And he says this. He says, his head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto brass, as if they burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Now, John is giving us a description of what he considers to be a picture of Jesus Christ. Now, these, these uh, 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 black Hebrews that are part of this group called the Israel United for Christ, they believe that society has been lied to because everywhere, or every, they say every church you go to, there's a picture of this, this Caucasian Jesus with long blonde hair and blue eyes and, and, and uh, complexion is white. And they say, but when we look at the Bible, the Bible tells us that's impossible. Because it says here that Jesus had uh, hair like wool, it was white, uh, his skin his, or his eyes were like a flame and fire, uh, his, his, uh, it says also that his feet were like the color of, of brass or bronze and, and those things. And they said that obviously is a picture of a black man, okay? So Jesus must be black. Well, I got news for, for, for these people, first of all, we all know Jesus was Jew. Right. It's, it's, just, it's just cut and dry, right? Okay. Uh, number two, you can go to Israel right now. You can go to the Middle East right now. And you'll find people of different complexion tones in that part of the country. Okay. And, and, and you ask them, what is your nationality? They'll say, We're, I'm Jewish. I'm a Jew. Okay. They're not going to say, well, I'm, I'm black. OK, you know, they're going to they're going to say that I am Jewish. OK, yes, Brother Monte. Yes. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's not. And, and, and we're going to we're going to be getting into some of that when we when we get to the uh, the uh, our counter. Right. And when I say our counter and, and what are we looking at? We're looking at their creed and we talked about their conception. This religion came into existence in 2003. OK. Uh, and, and now all of a sudden they believe that they're right and everybody else is wrong. Everybody that's been around for over 2000 plus years, they're all wrong. And this new this new group of people, they're right because, you know, others, they don't know what they're talking about. They, they got it wrong. And uh, and so um, but, yeah, as, as you indicated, Brother Montejo, you know, it's, it's, it's not, again, if, if you didn't hear me, and I'll say it again, it's not the color of your sin, it's, it's your sin, okay, that God is concerned about. He, he can care less about the color of your skin. And so, yes, Brother Gracious. Okay, that's, I'm getting into that when we get, when we, when we, <laughs> so, so, there's a skunk going through our property right there. I just had to say it. I know I kind of threw you guys off a little bit. Yeah, no, you don't want to go get him. But he's coming toward this way. It's a big one, too. Um, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to get into that when we, when we look at, at our counter, how we deal. And we're going to look at it from a biblical approach. What does the Bible say about it? And so 
Uh, but, but let me read on. So, so this is the reason why they believe that, that Jesus was black. They try to cite this passage here, and they want to take that literal interpretation of it. Uh, but remember, what they don't understand, this is what John saw. And, and we know, though, you know, there's, there's some things in the book of Revelation that's symbolic or figurative. And there are some things that are literal. That's the reason why we have to read everything in its proper context. OK, um, so so why does Christianity, they say, why? Why is it that Christianity? And in fact, I want to I want to do this. Uh, could you take this back to the visitors? And, and, and I, wanna, I want them to take a look at this. And to make sure I get my get the material back once we're done with it. Um, uh, what, what you're going to see is some material that was handed to us uh, when we were in Indianapolis. And, and so we, we, we want people to be aware of what's going on in, in, in our country today. Um, <clears throat> let me continue with what they believe. believe. Their belief entails that those descendants of enslaved Africans brought to the United States during the transatlantic slave trade are the true biblical Israelites. Uh, they believe that these people who now primarily live in the Western Hemisphere are in need of being woke up to their true identity. Many in this particular group, they, they preach that salvation, now get this, this is what they believe, they preach that salvation is only for the Israelites, which in some instances includes Hispanics, and Native Americans, okay? Others say, others in this group say that all Gentiles, anyone who within their worldview is not a descendant of African American slaves can be saved, but only if they recognize Israel's true identity, and even then, they will only be servants in the kingdom of God. So, so if you're not black and if you're not, uh, you know, uh, Latino, if you're not uh, Oriental, uh, then, you know, you, there's still hope for you. But when Jesus rules and reign, you're going to be a slave. You're going to be a servant during his reign. That's, you know, but, but let me say this. When I read my Bible, my Bible says all of us are going to be servants. We're going to serve Jesus during the millennial reign. And, and he has positions for us, obviously, during that time frame. Amen. But, but the fact of the matter is we're still going to be a servant to him. Amen. Okay. Uh, and, and it says here, it says, now this is their material. Some say Jewish people are imposters uh, who have stolen their identity and white people are the, oh, this is what they believe. They, they believe that some people uh, well, well, they believe that, that, that the Jewish people have stolen their identity. The Jewish people have stolen their identity. You know, the same Jewish people that we read about Moses, you know, he stole their identity. You know, uh, the, the descendants of, well, actually they'll say, well, we're a part of that because we're of the 12 tribes of, of Israel. Only their definition of the 12 tribes, if you, if you saw that publication, it has different group categories rather than, than Jewish people. But they, they say that Jewish people are imposters and have stolen their identities, and the white people are the devil personified. Uh, it is an uh, anthrocentric and mutilated ver Oh, this person says that it is an anthrocentric, mutilated version of the biblical message, and it involves all kinds of, he's saying it involves all kinds of distortions such as a mass distortion of large sections of historical record. And he's right. These people, they have literally tried to rewrite history and bring it to a, a, a standpoint where, where they take bits and pieces out of history. And then they try to form, if you will, from there. Uh, let's see here. And then at last, as we think in, 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 in concert with their creed, uh, the, is, the Hebrew Israelites, they believe that the Messiah will come and judge and enslave all white people. When Jesus comes to set his kingdom up, he's going to judge and enslave all white people. 
Now, now, folks, guys, and, and we're we're gonna we're gonna leave off right here uh, because it's it's time for us to to move on. But let me say this: um, you know, when when you have when you have a religion spewing out this type of rhetoric, uh, this type of information, is it any wonder why our nation is divided? Is it is it any wonder why uh, a people uh, are not willing to say hi to their neighbors anymore or help their neighbors out or reach out uh, to other people from different walks of life and, and in, in an effort to, to, to say that, hey, we're all citizens. We, you know, we're, we're, there, there, is, there is no race in God's eyes. There's, there's only one race, and that, that's the human race. And, and, and so, uh, but, but we obviously um, have to be people who asks the question, what does the Bible say about it? we got to get back to the Word of God. The word, we, do, you, do you understand now why the Bible is so important? Uh, do you understand why it is that we need God's Word? The, the Bible is the source for truth. And if we try to operate in our own understanding, we're, we, we're led by our own mind, we're going to end up in, in, in a bad situation because of it. Well, let's go to the... Does anybody have anything in, they'd like to add in closing? Okay. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much, God, for the introduction to this study. Uh, Lord, I know there may be people watching right now uh, uh, via YouTube or Facebook or what have you. And Lord, they're probably asking, what in the world is preacher talking about? Uh, Lord, my intent, my goal, God, is, is to point people back to Jesus Christ. Amen. And Lord, if, if we can do that, and Lord, we must have the Bible. The Bible is very crucial. It's needful if this is going to happen. But if we're going to do that, God, somebody has to be willing to stand up and, and, and call uh, a cult a cult. And Lord, simply, Lord, this is a cult. And Lord, uh, I, uh, this, this uh, united uh, uh, Israel for Christ, I pray, God, that these people will be exposed for who they are. And God, Lord, I'm, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power unto God unto salvation. Lord, to everyone that believes it, to the, to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles. So, Lord, help us, God, to be students of your word. Help us to get the message out. Be with the Sunday morning service. Be with the baptism this morning. For it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen.